Hello friends and welcome to a special Friday episode of Prepare for Birth with me, Dr. Marta Perez. Usually my Friday videos are all about just factual, evidence-based reviews of things regarding pregnancy and birth. And there's some vlog content too about my own pregnancy, etc. Um, but this will be a special episode because I recently posted on my Instagram about the new CDC MMWR report about COVID and pregnancy, reaffirming what we already suspected that pregnant women are a vulnerable group, including in having increased risk of hospitalization and ICU admission with COVID-19, but adding new information that they're also at an increased mortality risk than similar people age gender matched who are not pregnant. I received a ton of messages and comments on the post with additional questions about COVID and pregnancy and I thought the best way to explain them would be to do a video. So Friday's episode is going to be a hodgepodge of some frequently asked questions that I receive about COVID and pregnancy. I'm linking the Instagram post where I explain the CDC MMWR study and data in the description. Up in right above in the corner of the screen, I'm linking a prior episode that I already put on YouTube that's all about COVID and the labor and delivery floor. Before we get started, a reminder, today is November the 4th, 2020. COVID is a new disease. Things are changing all the time and we're getting different updates. So if you're watching this in the future, there may be some updated guidelines and some of the things that I say in this video may not be correct. If you follow along with me, I'll continue to do updates about COVID both on my social media channels, my blog, and here on YouTube. Question one, reading it off. Dr. Perez, you have information on COVID and maternal health, but how does a COVID infection impact the fetus? That's a great question, and there's a few things to cover. The first is the question of vertical transmission. Vertical transmission is when a maternal body is sick with either a bacteria or a virus. Can that bacteria or virus cross the placenta and directly infect the fetus or the fetal environment during pregnancy? And the answer to that is that we don't really have information about whether vertical transmission happens with infection in the first or second trimester, and if it does, what the sequelae is. But we're getting some information about third trimester, and overall, it seems to be unlikely that vertical transmission happens. Now, we don't have all the details, and there have been some studies that suggest that it does, but when I've been keeping up with the data, I see most data suggesting that probably there isn't vertical transmission happening in the third trimester. Birth defects, I've gotten questions about will birth defects happen? We haven't seen that yet, but again, we've been dealing with uh, high rates of COVID in this country for only about six months. So very early infections in the first trimester, those fetuses, those babies may not have been born yet. So we don't know for sure, but we really haven't seen anything super convincing for birth defects. So I think it's a relatively less likely scenario. The final thing to note is that anytime a pregnant person is critically ill during pregnancy, that affects the fetus. So very high fevers and critical illness in the first trimester can lead to miscarriage. They can lead to complications in the second or third trimester, which may involve miscarriage, stillbirth, preterm labor, etc. That's true of not just COVID, but any serious illness. That's why if you have not gotten your flu shot, please get it to decrease the risk of that happening from the flu. Another issue is that COVID is a respiratory virus. If the respiratory system is negatively impacted by the burden of the disease COVID, it's also negatively impacted by pregnancy. So sometimes in the third trimester, especially further down in the third trimester, sometimes delivery can help save the life of a mother, even if the baby is premature or preterm. So serious illness, especially respiratory illness, can also lead to preterm birth. Question, I had COVID during the first trimester. What does that mean and how will that affect the rest of the pregnancy for me and the baby? So this is a really good question. And the answer unfortunately is we don't really know yet. I haven't seen much data studying women who have had COVID during the first trimester of pregnancy and those outcomes. Like I said, time-wise, we may not even be to the third trimester yet in those pregnancies. Important to note, there is a big study going on that's just an online study and survey of pregnancy and COVID out of UCSF. I'm also in the show notes going to link that study. So if you've experienced COVID during pregnancy, please take a look at that study and joining it so that we can get more information about pregnancy outcomes in COVID. 
Next question. Doctor, I've seen information about COVID and blood clots. Some doctors seemed concerned and think that women should be on blood thinners during pregnancy. What do you think? This is another really good question. Certainly in non-pregnant people, we are seeing that COVID affects blood clotting with a propensity towards getting blood clots in small and big blood vessels. And this can be a major cause of the illness or serious illness in COVID. As many of you may know, pregnancy itself is a pro-thrombotic state, meaning it's already a state where you are more likely to get a blood clot. The postpartum period is actually a very high risk time for getting a blood clot. That being said, of course, I know I sound like a broken record, but it's true. We don't have good data about the specifics of the thrombotic effects of COVID plus pregnancy, and we don't have information on if prevention helps, if so, which ones, and for how long, and at what dose. So many institutions or doctors' office practices have developed their own protocols. I don't have a professional opinion to give you about, I think you should take this. I think you should listen and make a collaborative decision with your doctor. We know that the common blood thinners taken during pregnancy like heparin, aspirin, and lobinox, that those things are safe in pregnancy, but certainly you don't want to be on a blood thinner if you don't have to be. So talk with your doctor about your individual situation. I think there's, I've heard about different strategies. I think they're all reasonable and I think possibly in the future we'll have some idea and be able to create kind of protocols and policies at a national level from our organizations, but we just don't have those recommendations yet. The next question is by far the one that I've been receiving the most. Dr. Perez, I work as a blank, whatever high risk exposure job that you have. What do I do about work? And this is the hardest question to answer because it really depends. Just as some background, many people may not be able to just quit their jobs. In America, most families and most women rely on their income or two incomes or whatever situation where they have an income coming in through the pregnancy and postpartum period. Many don't get paid in a postpartum period or maternity leave, so they need to spend pregnancy working so that they can save to take even a little bit of time off. So of course there's not gonna be a recommendation that all pregnant people don't work because how would they survive? That being said, there are a lot of different choices that many different individuals might have about their work. Certainly pregnant people are a vulnerable population we're seeing. So they should be taking steps in their own lives with washing their hands, using masks, social distancing, like avoiding large crowds and unnecessary exposures and their families kind of cocooning the same way to keep them safe. But we live in the real world. We can't just quit our jobs just because they are exposing us, right? That's certainly true for me. I'm pregnant. I can't deliver babies from my home or virtually. I have to be there. And so I take all the precautions I can to still give my patients good care and to be able to work myself. If you have a job where you have the option to participate in virtual work instead of in person work, that may be a really good option for you. And so perhaps you can work with your supervisor or boss or your human resources and see what is available for your job or career. I'm not seeing a ton of policies made specifically protecting pregnant people from exposure. I know a lot of jobs are having flexibility, that's great. In healthcare, what we tend to do is try to have our colleagues care for known COVID positive patients to decrease the risk, but there are a lot of people who, patients, we don't know if they're positive or negative, and maybe that's the situation in your job, in retail, in education, in service, any of those things. So my answer to that is always just do the best you can with the resources you have. And I know that's really hard to hear, but we don't have other guiding policies. I just want you to do the best you can with the resources you have. And at the end of the day, that is the best thing for you. Dr. Perez, when will pregnant women be able to get the COVID vaccine? This has been another really common question. So first of all, I wanna remind everyone that we don't have a vaccine yet. There are several companies that are trialing vaccines, but none of them have been approved by the FDA yet. They're all still in the phase three trials. If they go through the phase three trials and the FDA reviews the information and finds that one, the vaccine has to be safe to be approved, 
And then two, even if it's not risky, it still has to be effective. We can't just vaccinate people with something that doesn't work. So we don't even yet have a vaccine. As far as for pregnancy, pharmaceutical companies do some special preclinical work to make sure a vaccine would be safe theoretically for pregnancy before making it available for pregnant people. Let's say a vaccine is approved, we would expect the pharma pharmaceutical company to give us some preclinical data, but we're going to be faced with, okay, a vaccine's available, it wasn't tested in pregnant humans, and we can either go a trial route, meaning you sign up for the trial if you want to volunteer to receive the vaccine as pregnant, and then we um, watch it going forward, or we a few years go by of people getting the vaccine voluntarily while pregnant, and then we look back and do a retrospective study saying, was that how did those pregnant people who got the vaccine fare when they got COVID or exposed to COVID compared to people who didn't get the vaccine? So I think we're years away from having data, but what I don't know is how the vaccine will be offered to pregnant women or not. And that will probably end up being an individual decision between a doctor and their patient with shared decision making. It will probably and likely be guided by some recommendations from ACOG, which is the National OBGYN Society, or Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine, which is the high-risk pregnancy group. They'll probably have some guidelines or ways to discuss and ways to decide, but I still think we're a few years away from having data specifically knowing how protective a vaccine may be in pregnancy. Finally, the last group of questions I'm going to kind of lump together. Can I have a baby shower? Can I travel to this state to see this family member? Can I attend this wedding in this situation? What about if I'm this month pregnant? Can this family member come visit when the baby comes? They're all very specific questions about specific travel events exposures or people. And it's really difficult because it's a confusing time. There is risk mitigation strategies, but there's no real black and white like, oh, you're not allowed to see any person that you don't live with. Sometimes it'd almost be easier to do that. I know everyone's asking because they really want to take the guilt and worry away from making these complex decisions by asking someone like me, who's an OBGYN doctor and knows a lot about COVID and pregnancy, but I can't just give you a black and white answer, right? My recommendation is that you vastly decrease your exposure capacity and take every precaution not to be exposed to COVID, especially in pregnancy. However, we live in the real world we're going to have to be making these decisions. But at the same time, don't feel bad about letting people down. Your number one responsibility is to protect the health of yourself and your family. So if someone's making you feel guilty about not going to a friend's wedding, that's not appropriate. Just tell them it's not safe for me right now and I don't feel comfortable and they have to respect that boundary. I wish that I could answer every single question for you with a, yep, this is what you do. But these situations are all individual and they're unique and they're stressful decisions to make. They often involve something we wanna do but sort of think we shouldn't or something we don't wanna do but we're receiving pressure from someone we love about. So I get the, they're really hard and I wish I could just give you yes or no answers. But they're really individual and these decisions aren't gonna stop happening. You're gonna be facing them when it comes to the baby coming, even having a toddler, et cetera. So I face this stuff in my own life, guys. I'm pregnant. I make a lot of these similar decisions, but thank you for being here. Again, if you have some general questions, I'd be happy to see them in the comments and try to respond to them. If you have questions about COVID and pregnancy, when it comes to labor and delivery and birth, check out my video on that. And then again, on Instagram, I have, I have highlights full of COVID and pregnancy specific content on studies and different things that have come out over time. Really glad that you guys joined me today. I really appreciate it for this unconventional episode. I hope you have a lovely weekend and remember to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I put up episodes. I'll see you next week.